Hey everybody and welcome to Michelin Studio Live. Obviously we're here right in the middle of the Sebring 12 hours. Now the race is well and truly underway. I actually just came over from the pit lane. I'm on Fox Sports 1 and I've been sort of narrating and curating the pit stops as they've been going on. And as you've seen, we've had cars upside down. We have cars hitting each other. And I think there's a reason for that. It's now incredibly hot. And of course, that is providing a challenge for everybody out there. All the drivers, it's the bumpiest thing. I just was interviewing some of the drivers. And uh, when they get out of the cars, they lost like five or six pounds just in the two hours they're out in the car. So it's getting a bit wild. So the race is really working as it should be. We have the most incredible conditions, but uh, we'll talk a little bit later when I talk to the mature gentleman on my right is my father, uh, in case I know the people here know that. Uh, Mr. Derek Bell, MBE, five-time winner of Le Mans, two-time world champion and robbed of a victory here. Uh, and then I have Hunter Swift, who is really fast emerging as a, an incredible photographer in the car world, social media, uh, very forward-thinking. And Welcome to you both. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Nice meeting you. And you too, first time. First time you're here? Yeah, you know, Dad, you've been around this track. You know what's happening right now. It, this stage of the race, we're about four hours in. What's, what's happening for the teams? What's happening for the drivers? Because it's tough for, these fans look like it's tough enough. What's, what's it like for the drivers? Yeah, I did do it, I think, 20 odd times. Having said, I'd never come here and do it again after the first time. However, I came back because it's the most incredible atmosphere that I've ever had at a racetrack, even parallels Le Mans, to be honest. But uh, no, the problem now is it's the hottest the day has been. And despite wearing and running Michelin tires, they have a lot of, pro not problems, but a lot of things to consider. And the rubber is coming off the tires, obviously. And I noticed in that last full course yellow that they had a machine out there blowing all the crud off the track. Now, I've never seen that before. I've seen them do it at Indy when they're moving bits of, you know, debris away. But they were out there just blowing off the track because there's so much debris on it. And of course, these guys are so much overtaking going on that they have to go on the incorrect line to get by. And when they get on it, they slide, whatever the conditions are like for the tires, but it's not funny for it. And of course, they slide into the car beside them that is actually gripping quite well because they have to go by. And so it's causing these incidents, which is lots of tapping of bodies and quite interesting ent entertaining stuff going on and swearing, I've no doubt. Well, no, you, you, can, you can see, I saw one of the drivers run, I won't say already who he was, but he was running up and had another driver by the front of his shirt. So, so yeah, a lot of enthusiasm. <laughs> do you understand what uh, that's talking about? I do, yeah. I do. Yeah. You know, uh, this last weekend, uh, or well, the last, like, last couple of days, Michelin brought us out. Uh, we've been have an opportunity to test out some cars and different tires, and then uh, yesterday we actually got to take cars out on the track. Yeah. And this is uh, the first time that I've ever been here, first time I've ever taken a car on the track here and uh, the first thing that I noticed was the terrain, concrete. It's uh, definitely not smooth, uh, lots of bumps. I, in fact, last night, Michelin, X, I think it was the first time that this ever happened, they actually had dinner uh, right yeah. on the racetrack. You wouldn't want to do that right now, it's a little bit... Yeah, definitely not. But occupied. one of the things that I noticed was the cracks in the pavement and you could literally put your hand in there and uh, you know, it looks like they fill it with some type of car, but <laughs> yeah. the tires are so sticky, they pull it up, and then yeah. it's just all this debris, but uh, very bumpy, uh, but a lot of fun. Uh, then we actually got to take out, uh, do some ride-alongs with some of the faster cars, uh, a couple of the race cars, the Z4, GTE, um, or uh, the GT3, I think. GT3, yeah, you win it, yeah. And a 911 Cup car, and man, uh, so fast. Well, they went around with Bill Oberlin. We, we had Billy on the stage yesterday as well as one of his teammates. It's his 25th year running here. Yeah. He's in the car number 25, they were on pole. So I think he was in a really good mood last night, which wasn't that great for these guys, because he took them around in one of the former IMSA championship Z4s, and they were absolutely, I was watching them come out of the tur out of turn 17, and go, well, I'm glad they didn't have dinner before we, before we did yeah, that. Yeah, I definitely hit my head a couple times against the roll cage. Yeah. You know, when they slam on the brakes, they try to transfer all that weight up to the front. That, that five-point harness, man, sensed me really good. So. Well, we, when we're driving, of course, we have the wheel and the, and the, and the brake and the uh, footrest to slow us to stop that impact of us going forward. Plus, we know we're going to do it. Yeah. When you sit there, you don't know that we're going to hit the brakes. Yeah. In fact, you think we should have hit them a little earlier. Yeah. Well, and the, the, the most impressive thing, though, was the cornering. Yeah. Like, it's the, it, I've heard the expression, like, oh, the car drives on rails. Mm. No. No. It, I it don't goes, know, whatever, it drives sideways. Yeah, it's a, it was just an amazing experience. Yeah. Uh, I can't even imagine going even faster than that in these type of parts. Of well, now imagine someone else is trying to stop you doing it. Yeah. You know, they're fighting to the same concrete. Obviously, 
one of the big things. We know what's happening out on track, but you can tell by everyone here. I mean, happy St. Patrick's Day. There's a man, very tall man, in a very tall green hat, in a very large green shirt. It must be sweaty. Only for today. Uh, oh, yes, I can't say what's on your shirt, sir. Um, <laughs> Happy St. Patrick's Day to everyone, but of course, it is about fans here. In case you've noticed, we actually have 110,000 people here who are here like it's a music festival and they're ready to rock. Yeah. Uh, it's a happening. This is way more than just a motor race. Absolutely. You know, just the fanfare, a uh, lot of partying going on. People are having a good time. You could have better weather here. Um, I, I actually think a lot of the people don't even know a race is going on because they're having so much fun right here. In that was my line at the start of the race. I said that. I said half of them don't even know we're about to start the race. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a lot of fun. I mean, it's amazing. Uh, you know, I think motorsports and racing, I do believe that it's making, uh, uh, rising, definitely, uh, the interest. I think you're getting more people that are into cars and customizing cars and track days. Um, and what's nice about this versus, like, stock car or, you know, F1, it's a production car, right? Um, you know, yeah. you could have a Corvette. Well, it looks like your, yeah, it looks like It's based off car, of it. Yeah. So it's a bit have quicker, a, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you could have a Corvette and, you know, model and look things that are doing on the C7R, and because of some of the testing that they're doing, some of the features might be put on production Well, it's, it's they call it transfer technology or tech transfer, and, and it happens all the way through, but it also happens, I just did a feature in the pit lane uh, on the racing uh, Michelins because they bring, they have many types of construction they can use, but they actually have to choose their construction for, this, for, the, for the series, for the season. And they have temperature range tires, and as it gets hotter, they actually overlap into the next temperature band. So they're, right now, the track temperature is about 109 degrees, which is starting to go up. It's never been that hot all weekend. And then when it cools down tonight, the asphalt changes temperature at the same time, a different rate to the concrete. So it literally is this very synergistic working relationship between the tire guys. And when you're driving, you just want to go fast. Talking of which, I have no clue what just happened, but obviously they're under full course yellow. That's why it's been quite quiet. Um, what we really are talking about here, though, I think this is something very important for, for everybody who's watching and everybody, all of us sitting here, is it really is a shared passion. It's a shared passion for performance. It's a shared passion for, for going fast, for appreciating technology. Is that where your photography comes in? Yeah, you know, I, I've always kind of been into cars, um, kind of been into racing, like just watching. Um, but, you know, once I had a car and I started customizing it, I kind of was wanting to show it off and I would take pictures of my own car and then ended up kind of getting kind of good at it and then people were like, hey, can you take a picture of my car? And so ended up kind of starting with that, but, uh, you know, the, taking pictures of a car, I mean, technology has gotten so, uh, so much improvements that it's pretty easy to take a picture of the car, but, you know, the, the ability to uh, capture the car, uh, its angles, the body line, the aerodynamics and the, the motion of speed, um, it takes us some talent, and that's what I really try to do, is to try to show off what the engineers and the designers or the people who are customizing it uh, to really appreciate what it is that it is. And a lot of people follow you doing it. Yeah. So, Dad, I know we, all, we always joke, Dad actually has a book out. He's got another book coming out relatively soon that someone's writing. But we all say about racing drivers that there's probably another book that we're not allowed to publish. Um, and Sebring really is the kind of place of legend. Dad, what is your favorite Sebring memory? that you can talk about? Uh, there were quite a lot. Okay. Because we raced here 26 times. I mean, it's a job to save. You're talking about in the car or out of the car. But I must admit, everything seems to happen here. And um, it's been hilarious over the years. And the team managers are watching the antics that go on, wondering where his drivers will be when it comes to the next driver change. But we have a great, we always have a great time. It's the, honestly, this is the one race in the world that you have to go to, even if you didn't like racing, because it's a happening. It's like going to Wimbledon. You might not like tennis, but you have to go there or the US Open or whatever. It's a very special event. There's no other race like it. You can take your Indy 500, but it's round and round and round and oval. This thing is the roughest track that we go to. Bits are falling up, there's holes all over the place. It can't really do much with it because it belongs to the air airport and the airport aren't bothered about one event a year. But it is used a lot for testing and there is a shorter track within it that we come here and do IndyCar testing. And um, I mean, when I first came here, it was another two miles. And we used to go out onto the way out on the runways. I remember going out there and qualifying. My first year was 71. I was in a Porsche 917, my, first, my only second race in the car. We'd won together, Sifford and I had in Argentina. And we came here with a factory. I remember in qualifying, going out the back. And we used to go around all these corners and then and way down a thing called, um, called Warehouse Strait. 
And there'll be buildings either side, and the guys will be there looking out as you went by at sort of 140, 150 miles an hour. And then you'll sweep out onto the airfield. And as I turned out there, the front left wheel or suspension collapsed and I disappeared across in all the, the rubbish and grass and everything. And Mario followed me and ready because he thought I was going to have a big accident. And it took a long time to stop, so he kept following me until I stopped, <laughs> having taken all these fences out. But of course, there was no guardrail in those days. And we both got out of the car, and he helped me get out. Get out. And he's, we said, what the hell are we doing here? I mean, this place is murderous. And we said, we're never coming back. And we came back for the rest of our lives. So there's something about it that draws you back. And I even come to watch the race. There's only one race I watch, it's this one. And I go to Lamar because of my history there, and I'm obliged to, but not really obliged. I enjoy it, gastronomically enjoy it. Coming here is just spectacular. Well, you missed a good dinner last night. Uh, I know you came and saw everyone. We had an amazing dinner last night. We had a Michelin star chef who actually uh, cooked down in the pit lane and presented quite an incredible meal. And we told the story of how the Michelin's uh, red guide came about and it really is all about driving it's all about passion hunter i hope you enjoyed your weekend here it was a lot of fun yeah it's, it's been definitely special. gonna be memorable i kind of want to bring my family down here and have some good times yeah i think so well you know and and, and and don't let the kids go over there dad it's fun to have you we have a special treat come out you might want to hang out uh we'll talk about it after the show ends right now uh but a fabulous artist is about to do a very special uh, portrait of uh, my dad. He didn't know that, but... Um, it looked like an underground map, but that's all right. Yeah, they'll, they'll get all the creases and cracks. Um, so everybody, listen, thanks so much for watching this episode of Mission Studio Live. The race is still going on behind me. Go to imsa.com to check out the listings because it is live all the way to the end of the race on various platforms and on imsa.com. And of course, we've got more coming up from this, not only this studio, but all the social media influencers on their handles are posting a lot of content. Mad Media are pumping a lot of stuff out, so Sebring 12 Hours has a long way to go. See you later. <laughs>